Hello everyone, and welcome back to Studio 4. Last time, we went over creating new projects, saving templates, and setting up Digital Performer to work in your studio. Today, we'll be going over how to create new audio tracks in DP9. So go ahead and open your Digital Performer project. I have one already created for this tutorial. If you're unsure how to create a new Digital Performer project, or how to arrange your viewing windows, please check out our previous tutorial. Once your project is open, go to the Project menu and click Add Track. And here we can see the different track types available to us. I'm going to create a mono audio track, but here you can see the option for a stereo track. This is a good place to find the shortcuts for these tracks as well. Command Shift A for mono, Command Shift S for stereo, A for audio, S for stereo. So here's my new audio track in the Tracks window. If your mixer window is open, you'll see that Digital Performer created a channel strip for our new audio track as well. Before we begin recording, let's check out some of the settings and icons in our track in the Tracks window. To the far left, you'll see some dark arrows in the Move column. This allows you to uh, select your track and drag it to a different order in the Tracks window. Next is the loop icon. We're not going to cover that today, but we will in a future tutorial. Next is the lock button, and this allows you to lock the track so that you can't edit it or make any accidental changes to it once you have it the way you want. Following the lock is the record button. This arms your track uh, to enable recording. Following the recording icon is the monitor icon, and this allows you to see and hear the incoming signal that your uh, track is receiving. Next is the input. Here you can select uh, which input you'll be receiving for this audio track. Uh, in my case I'll be using input 3 from my interface. If you're unsure of how to communicate with your interface in Digital Performer, uh, please check out our previous tutorial on setting up interfaces to work with Digital Performer. Next is the level icon, and this is a lot like the, the mixer window. If it's receiving incoming signal, it'll show you um, with a little indicator here the level. Next is the play icon, and what this does is in this mode, uh, mutes your track. You'll notice if I deselect the play so it's not green, that the mute icon in the channel mixer is enabled. So this mutes your audio track. However, if I go over here to the Tools menu and select the big yellow S for solo mode, now my little play icon is orange. And if I select it so that it's green, you'll see that the solo button was enabled on our mixer window. So there are two different ways to use this depending on which mode you're in and what your preferences are. Right now I'm going to leave solo mode off. Uh, next is the exempt window, which allows you to uh, make your audio track solo exempt. So usually this is more helpful for like an aux track or for a bus send or for a master fader that uh, you don't want to be muted when another track is soloed. Following the solo icon is the output menu. And of course, this lets you route your signal from this track to wherever you want to send it. Right now, I have it going to my main speakers, but you can create new bundles that go out to the interface. Here you see my Behringer X32 interface. Or you can send it via bus to an aux track. Um, whatever your preferences are, this is where you'll find the outputs. Next is the take column. And this is really cool in Digital Performer. If you are in a recording session and you know you're going to be doing multiple takes of different tracks, then uh, you can store them all under the same track and just select different takes instead of having a full window full of, of tracks, guitar one, guitar two, guitar three. Um, you can just save all those takes under the same track and not have your, your window completely full of, of takes that you have to sort through. 
Next is the track enable icon. You may remember we had this play icon over here that allows you to mute or unmute or solo and unsolo your track. But even when you have that muted or, or unsoloed, um, the track is still being processed. And the enable icon allows you to turn off the track completely so that no audio is coming and the computer isn't trying to process it. Usually this is helpful if you're working on a large project and you only want to isolate some things you're working on, maybe the drum section or, or whatever. Um, but this way you can save your, your processing speed and energies uh, to work on other things when you're not using tracks. Next is the color icon. This one's red, but it, by clicking on this, you can change the color to set up for different groups that you're working on. Um, I'll go ahead and pick a cyan. Following the color is the track name, and this one's a little bit more tricky to edit because uh, with the color icon, you can just click on it. But with the name, I can't just click on it, and if you right-click on it, you'll notice that there's no rename track in the options. So what you do is double click the name and you'll notice our mix window changed to the sequence editor. And here we have our audio track and I can right click that and click rename track. To whatever you want it to be. I'll just name it vocal one for now. And now uh, there are other uh, automation icons and whatnot that we can change on our tracks window, but we won't go over that today. The things that you need to get started have been covered and uh, they're all right here in this window. So now let's go ahead and make sure that everything's working. By clicking on the monitor, uh, we can see that we have incoming level and by clicking record, you'll also notice that record enables our our mix window down here, and I've got signal coming in for that as well. So our track is armed, it's ready to record, and we'll record something really quickly by clicking the record button. Hello everyone, and welcome to Studio 4. And we'll disarm the track for recording, and listen to that. Hello everyone, and welcome to Studio 4. And so there we have our audio recording, everything set up, it works, and you're ready to record an audio track. Now, let's go back and have a look at our, our mute group, for example. I have my play icon enabled, but maybe I don't want to listen to this track right now. I'll disable it, and our mute button comes up. And I'm going to hit play, and I want you to watch in the top right corner, we have a processing meter and a playback meter. And if I hit play, even though the play icon is disabled, our playback meter is going to show the, uh, the computer still processing this track. And there it goes. And even if I switch this to solo mode, and enable the solo, disable the solo so it's not soloed, no audio coming out, if I hit play, it's still processing. But if I turn off my enabled icon, it's that little blue power icon, and hit the play button, you'll notice that there is no playback processing occurring on that track. So that's a good difference to know. Thank you all so much for watching this tutorial. Please hit like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.